Hello. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. So while we're waiting for a few people, hi there. <laughs> Hello. Hi guys. So today we are going to look into this letter group um, T and F. Um, so if you're new to my calligraphy, uh, the Carlo Mick Art Study Room, so let me introduce myself. My name is Carlo. Uh, I'm actually from Hong Kong, um, born and raised in Hong Kong, and my Chinese name is Carlo, so it becomes Carlo uh, in English. And my brand is Carlo Mick Art, and uh, so I was actually an invitation designer and gradually became a calligrapher. And I'm now doing a lot more calligraphy education in Hong Kong. And um, yeah, so a little bit about me. Now today, we are going to look at this group called the Top Crossbar. Um, it's a Top Crossbar group. So um, it is a crossbar. So you can see that for T and F, there's a crossbar. We call this a crossbar, okay? And for T, there's the top one. And for letter F, you can see on the letter F, you will have the top crossbar and also the middle crossbar. Okay, so I'm good. Thank you. I'm well. I've been staying home today because Hong Kong, we have some protests going on and it's near where I work. So I just stay home. <laughs> Thanks for asking. I've been preparing for tonight. Um, so I've got lots to share with you. Now, um, I have these copy sheets um, available for download if you're ever interested um you can go to the shop dot and it comes in a packet you can down you can either buy the digital one or the printed versions so the printed version basically you get um the whole page of alphabets uh twice so you got two pieces of you know all the letter t's or two pieces of all the letter f now also it comes with a bonus packet, which it means um, inside the bonus packet is you have the whole exemplar of A to C in sequence like that, or the A to C in the group form. So previously I have been um, doing the demo on uh, different groups. So group one, group two, group three, and today is group four. Okay, so if you ever missed it, um, the demo, you can go back to, you can visit my IGCV and it should, you should be able to find all the different um, demonstration. Now, in the special packet, I have also included the practice in group format. Okay, so you got today T and F. Now, for the sake of demonstration, I will write on a blank um, page which is just showing the guide which will be easier okay now let's kick start so the first alphabet today we're going to learn is letter T so I want to show you um, when we do letter T the first thing that we will have is the line of universal beauty so we came across this last time um, when we did the I and J so maybe just a quick recap Okay, so first of all, let me write it out. Now, I'm to move away the light. Okay, so it's less reflective. So you have, this is called the line of universal beauty. So this is technically you come with a soft curve and then gradually getting thicker Ideally is you want the center part to be the thickest and then curving it out back to a hairline and you notice that in this um, line of universal beauty it can ends with a ball terminal so we will put the dot you pressed and will fill in okay so the key things to remember is you start with a thin line then the center is what I call the thickest stroke 
and back to the thin. Now thin is like hairline, so meaning that you don't add pressure at all. Okay, thin, thick is thin, so you can have like, well, in a more accurate way to say it, it's hairline, so HL. Then you have the shade. These are more the term, term, uh, the terms, and then back to a hairline. Now, obviously, this line is gradation of pressure, and if you are doing it uh, more accurately, you will notice that there is a little hidden triangle here. Okay, and also, of course, the hidden triangle right here, because this is the part where you curve. Now, I'll do one more time. This line definitely needs a lot of practice to try to get it accurate. Lift and pressed. Okay, so now for example, last time when we did the letter I, we had this. Right, but remember when we did the eye, we start a little bit higher. We stop, start a bit higher, and then we did this. Well, there's several ways to to finish it. Okay, so what I want to emphasize this time is when we do the letter T and letter F, you want your line of universal beauty to go a little bit lower okay so instead of starting it on the ascender two line this is the top ascender line you want to start a little bit lower so if this is the a2 line this is your ascender one okay so a2 and ascender one what you want to do is you want to start about here in the center now approximately okay you don't have to um, be so exact but the idea is it, you don't go, want to start so higher okay then you want to start low press okay and then after we did this we will do the top crossbar the crossbar okay so you want to start with a thin hairline adding pressure Now, sorry, I, I kept it quiet because I was trying to focus. Now, the idea is you want to have a thin line, no adding pressure, and then gradually adding pressure. So meaning that on this shaded area, the center part should be the thickest. And then you come light and come up. Now, when you cross, uh, when you come up, what you want to achieve is be as light as possible, meaning that your index finger, you don't want to add pressure because you want it to have a very thin hairline. You come up and of course, when you come up, you want to go slightly above. You can go slightly above the A2 and extend it out. Okay. So now the next step is what you want to do is you rotate the paper anti-clockwise. So what I did is early I was doing this, okay? And then I tilt it anti-clockwise so that it's more like vertical to me. And then I will follow this curve and do a and do a, a synthetic shade. So I follow the curve and add the pressure. Okay, just like that. Now this synthetic shade, the purpose of it is to make the T a little bit more stronger it doesn't feel too weak on the top um, it's give it some strength some power <laughs> more kind of like firm sitting on you know on on the baseline now notice that there are a few details i want to talk you through notice when you're doing this oval So this come down, it becomes an oval, right? And this oval is actually more off slant. So bear with me, let me get the ruler. 
This is a 55 degree slant. Okay, can you see that the line of universal, uh, the line of universal beauty sits right on the 55 degree slant, but this oval, it's a little bit more angled to the to the right. Okay, so instead of this, it's more rotated to your right. Okay, so I would say this is a, um, a kind of, well, the degree will be less, but I won't be worrying about exact amount because now by doing this, you will have a nicer looking T. So I'll do one more time. Start lower from thin, thickest, back to thin. Terminal and the ball shape. Okay, maybe my hairline was a little bit, um, a little bit thick. Okay, what I just did is I draw a very thin line on the right hand side of the shade so that elude like to create an illusion. The center area looks a little bit thicker in that way. Okay, so. Right, like that. Tilt the paper anti-clockwise. Then you follow and you press. Okay. Now this shade it should be really really thin. Really thin. So it's it should be thinner then the line of universal beauty to so this line. It is more like a dec decorative line. And of course, this shade, you also want it to be a little bit thinner than this, this part, okay? Now, what I want to say about this oval as earlier, this hidden oval, it has an slant that is not quite the same as your uh, main slant. It's a little bit more pointed from here. It's more pointed to that way. Kind of like, if you imagine the oval, if this oval is on slant, right? So you want that oval to be more instead of, okay? So you want to angle the oval more, rotate it to the right. <laughs> okay, now I was also going to say one important point for the T is you want to make sure there is a gap a little space in between and this is quite important detail because if you touch the two so that's the first one rotate the paper get the shade i'll do the second one However, this time what I do is I I bring the the line all the way touching the A2. Okay. Now, oh, let's do the synthetic shade. Now, if you compare them, this will look more kind of like blocky, more stuffy. Somehow this with the tiny gap feels a little bit lighter. Okay. Um, I actually pick up this detail from the workshop from Eleanor Winters um, when I took her class a few years ago, which I was, I found it very fascinating. Um, so please be aware of that. Okay. Now, what other details can I show you? When you do the T, if you put the slant 
Okay. 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 Notice that it is quite nice when it's parallel, the loop, and here it's balance. Okay. And this is a personal preference. I like the length of the top part. Okay. This and this to be a bit balanced. So meaning the left and the right it's equal like more or less equal okay now there is no like um um uh, how do you say it? this is not like a must because um certain calligraphers the pref they may preferred to make it a little bit shorter okay is still acceptable so it is just a tiny bit shorter it will still look good now obviously you don't want it to be too short then it doesn't read as a T okay so uh, as later on I will show you some examples um, I found from the scenario menu and other books and you will see that you know the length sometimes um, the old masters they make it very long and I think it's more of an artistic way um, especially when you're writing in a paragraph or an art piece so um, you can adjust the length um, slightly to kind of balance with the whole words especially if you're writing not just the capital letters but if it's a full word okay now so that's a T I think it's quite simple it's not very tricky but the key point is you really want to practice a lot and a lot of the capital stamp and um, to get it more accurate so let me fix the camera okay and then make sure you immediately think about the angle of this oval you start with thin thicker and allow there's a gap now don't worry so much about what's the measurement i don't think of it like that i just want to make sure they are not touching each other and i don't think about like how many mm but when you write more, you kind of, uh, you kind of get a get a kind of like, how do you say? You get used to it, or it becomes part of the muscle memory. Now, one thing I want to uh, mention here as well. You see, this has a more curvy line, right? So technically, this is a uh, line of universal beauty because the line of universal beauty start with a curve, and then on the slant here. And then out in a curve and of course this line of universal beauty has no shade until you add the synthetic shade at the end sorry i kind of messed it up here now this line that i just did the cross um the top crossbar here it's a little bit flat right now this is still okay because from the old examples that i gathered sometimes it's quite like dramatic it drop quite a lot sometimes it's a bit flat again i think this is your personal preference um i usually like to have a little bit of a curve rather than too flat so now you want to add the shade back and when you add this shade this is requires some practice and you want to think about it like that the shade is like sitting below okay so I did not fill in uh, the ink, but the shade basically it's on the right hand side of this hairline. So you want to add like that. I might have make it a bit too thick now. Okay, maybe let's redo it one more time. We got plenty of time today because T and F is kind of the simplest of all.
Okay, then you rotate the page. Add it on the right hand side of this hairline, so to this side, not on the top. Just very lightly. Just like that. Okay, so there you go, you got the T done. Now, letter F, basically it's the same thing, which is make it making it super easy, right? So it's exactly the same thing, and um, you just add the lower or middle crossbar, you can call it. So, let's start again. I'm afraid you just have to see me <laughs> writing the T so many times today. Now, if you're using the guideline, make sure you think about the triangle, okay? It really helps. And then we'll do the synthetic shade. Going back. Now, for the F, you want to come up, lift, jump through this part of ink and come out. And for what I do in the exemplar is you come out and you make a turn like that. Okay, I will do one more time. You come out, skip. Now this looks like a mini 7 in a way, if I bring one more time, just like that. Now the end here should be like a sharp angle, so if I bring it higher, okay. Now there's a little technique to help you to um, square the bottom. So as I'm doing this, I move my nib to the left like that okay because I want the tine on the right hand side to be shifted to your left so move to the left okay now obviously this is when I do it dramatically to give you um, an idea so when you're practicing um, let me remove the ink so you can see when I'm doing this, the nip opens, right? And you're moving to your uh, to the left. The tine on the right hand side, so this tine on the right, will snap to your left. Okay, so let's pretend come down and then pull it to the left. Now, of course, if you cannot do that, there's another method you can touch up. If it's a little bit rounded like this, you can draw a little L shape at the corner. So what I did, I'm making a little bit bigger. So is it, do you see this is a little bit fat? It's not very uh, rounded, uh, sorry, not very square base yet. So you do a little L and make it sharp. Of course, you can do reverse L if it's you want the right hand side to be sharp okay now that is the crossbar for this f it's just one um, example just one so there are many options you can try so i try to list it out um, i can show you what i did for the preparation so i listed this out okay so here are a few options so let me show you that you can practice okay I'm afraid you have to see me writing the T again okay change the angle Now, sometimes if I'm in a rush, it kind of fly out. So be careful of that. Okay. Then, 
the other method you can do so you can come up skip extend it out and lift and press like that okay so this is different from what we learned earlier just now was a loop this is come up lift extend out lift and then we sharpen it the corner okay so I skip through because there should be um, a line here, right? Okay. So when you come down, make sure you want to come down parallel to the uh, capital stamp. Okay. So you can call it the line of universal beauty or you can call it the capital stamp or magic square stamp. Um, so now it is very important. You want to make sure they are parallel. There's another F. leave the gap turn the page okay come back here now you can come up and then this time you make a loop but the loop it get covered by the ink when you press down so you come loop and press it should cover it okay so one more time <laughs> so it should cover it now again you try to keep it parallel to the slant so what you want to avoid doing is for example if we already have this is you want it to avoid going out like that so it's quite obvious the slant is not the same okay so you want to avoid this because it's not parallel and it's not very nice all right now a little bit about the crossbar where the placement is um, i personally like it when it's sitting in the middle this uh, middle crossbar it's sitting in the middle um of the whole um, alphabet so if we look at the whole alphabet it will be right here in the center because this alphabet will have um, one two three you take up one two three spacing right so if i divide it into half the crossbar will approximately be there okay so i would not bring the crossbar too low or too high it will look disproportional let me show you it's always important to compare the difference and then you, uh, you know, even though you know it's incorrect or inaccurate, you can write it out so that you can really see the difference. So let's try. Okay, turn. Add thin, thick. <laughs> Sorry, that's not very nicely done. Let me figure out the camera. Maybe that's better. Okay. Let's start again, I'm afraid. That's better. See the difference? This is more subtle. This is better. Now, for crossbar, if we put it very low, <laughs> it looks like a grandfather. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe it looks like the droopy. Um, oh, I th I'm thinking of a Chinese character. You know, like a Sao Sing Gong or something when they have very long mustache, white one, and then drooping down. <laughs> I think maybe if you're from Hong Kong, you know what I mean. <laughs> right? So it's too low here. Now, what happens if it's too high? Maybe we just use this. So we'll bring it up. Okay, do you see? 
It doesn't look too good. So the crossbar will work. When it's in a, more or less in the center. Okay. Like that. So now one one thing that I also want to mention when you're writing, um, especially when you start to practice with uh, words, not just the alphabet itself. So, is it going to be hard to connect? What do you mean? The crossbar here to connect? It kind of, yeah. I mean, if you're thinking about the lowercase, for example, here, it's going to be, first of all, the proportion is not accurate because in the Roman capital, um, if we look at the Roman capital, I have an example here. So if we look at the Roman capital, the skeleton of the Roman capital, so the crossbar is sit right in the center of the square, okay? So there's a lot of lines here, but this is the center line of this larger square. So so that's why it looks more proportional. It's not because uh, we're making it up, but it's just based on the Roman capital. And F, with the capital F, the center line sits right in the middle and it's a bit shorter than the center line here now but then when we do uh, the engrosser script style it's not so uh, important uh, the length of it it's more about the location sorry the placement of the middle crossbar okay now so you you were just saying oh is it because harder to connect it is will affect if you make it very low, first of all, it doesn't look good because of the Roman capital rules. And secondly, if I am to have to enter uh, an entrance stroke, this is in the way. If you bring it higher, I can write maybe the word French or France, and I would do this. Oops. Okay, so you see there is small space in between them. It's gonna not bump into each other. Okay. Did I miss something? I thought I was going. Sorry, <laughs> I'm super absent-minded. I think I was writing. Was going to talk about something. Oh yes, I know. No, no, I remember now. Sorry, guys. So we're talking about okay when we write um, with words. My apologies. Now, when we write with words, you need to consider whether the top crossbar needs to be shifted higher. Because if I'm writing, uh, for example, the, T-H-E, which is very commonly used, you know, in a paragraph or the first word of, um, of an, uh, a, a writing, a piece of writing, um, I will make the top crossbar a little bit more higher, more like floating in the air. Okay, like that. So notice that I'm bringing it higher above the ascender two line. Okay, then we do exactly the same thing. Rotate the paper. Uh, for me, it's anti-clockwise because I'm right-handed, and you want to add the synthetic shade right underneath this line. A little shade. Now, if I write th, okay, 
okay so you see they're not crossing each other you can even bring it a little bit higher So hopefully that helps. So it's important when you are writing and thinking about whether the uh, what's gonna come up next. So if I know that there's an ascender, I usually bring this slightly higher. Now I have prepared um, some examples um, to show you before we do a, a summary. So I have this different kind of books here. Okay, I think I will start with, now let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, bear with me. <laughs> Let me figure out my table. So first of all, I want to show you the T first. Now this is from the Zanary menu. Um, how you can study yourself. Um, this is how I would do it. So because today we're doing a letter T, I want to show you that um, first of all, I will add the ascender line and the, the baseline, okay? Um, so as I said that you can see, this is the 55 degree slant. So the line of the universal beauty will sit on the main slant. However, this oval, it's more angled to this side. Okay, so it was here and then more angled there. And I think it took me some time to realize that and I used to make the oval kind of with the slant that is parallel to the 55 degree. And it kind of, now if I look back at this, um, a little bit awkward. So please bear in mind to do that. I guess the idea is you think about doing this and then you imagine the oval more this way. So you move and know that the the axis the point is hitting here and once you hit here you go up okay now another t from the zanary menu that i want to show you for example is here so um looking at this do you remember i mentioned earlier that the crossbar the top crossbar doesn't have like a fixed length it works quite well in this um piece by uh, so wait okay wait let me sit properly first now you can see that this is longer okay a lot longer if we use a pencil sorry i try to not move so much this is your slant right you see this is parallel okay and um don't worry, this is not the original scenario menu. This is a printed one for self-study. <laughs> I won't just write on it. This side, it's shorter than this side. Kind of dramatically too. But the same rules apply. This oval, it's very uh, angled this direction instead of on the slant. Okay, You still have the shaded, the synthetic shade here. And notice that this is slightly wider than this and this shade. So this is the key stem. And one thing is, if you're ever wondering why did I write the line of hidden virtual beauty first, is because you imagine building a house. You have to build the center, the main column, right? This is how I always think about it. So you build the main column, then you work on the roof. Then you can decide it if you want it to be parallel 
you can have this as your center line and if I'm doing the oval uh, kind of indirect oval here and I can decide okay I want to stop here to make them both pair uh, sorry to make the left and right balance in terms of the length or I can keep going to make it longer so this is my guide okay if that makes sense now what else I have another T that I want to show you yep again same concept you have the oval angled this is on the 55 degrees slant and this side is super long I think when you're you know when in the old times when they're writing a whole piece uh, instead of just the letter T on its own they kind of make it a bit longer it's more decorative you can see here as well it's just adding the flourish even interestingly like a letter i right it looks like an i here because of this loop however with the long going up this suggests that it's a t because if you sh shorten this and stop here it will look like a letter i but this word is the okay now from the zanary menu oh let me show you all the t first so i have then got this is um, a printout. This is by Luther, and I got this from uh, Dr. Joe Fatolo. So you can take a screenshot if you want, and you can uh, okay, and you can download it online. I just found it online. I can't remember which link, but I'm sure if you search, you can find this. And I want to show you this. This is by Luther. And it's very interesting. So first of all, this little, little tiny gap. There is still a gap here. Make, I'll make it brighter. So this is a printed copy. So um, directly from the internet. So it's the quality is not very high, but you can see a tiny gap. It's not touched together, but there is still a little gap. Again, the same thing applies. The oval angled at this one. The slant is here. This is approximately the same, not exactly, but very similar. And the T is very long, okay? Now, now I hope this is not boring, but this is the way you can study. Um, this is another book that I recommend at the start of the um, of my demo in, in back a few weeks ago this is tommy thompson script lettering for artists i really really like this book even the style is more round hand it's more um it's not as if what i call an engrosser script style but they are basically the same just um kind of think of the round hand is more rounded but if you look at this t look how different it is and this book it's a uh, first published in 1965 okay and you can see this t almost looks like an i right but notice the shade here quite interesting and there's a loop coming down the instead of a bottom note it used more like a teardrop shape here okay so it's again it groups the t and f in the same group now look at the f you can see this is going going on the loop and come down it's slightly curved into here okay but again this line is parallel to the main slant all right i think that was the key and i think for f i have more to show you bear with me very quickly now if we look at the f here this is back from the scenario menu look at the different variations this is using a loop to come down okay <laughs> this one using the loop but closed it's another variation this one kind of like a spaghetti <laughs> yeah a bit wiggle come here and then a little bit an s curve right I find it very interesting to just observe all these little crossbar um, what about this? This is what I prefer most and this is also what I include on my copy sheets and because uh, I think it's kind of a 
standard beauty, very classic. So you have a curve coming up, you lift, come up, make a like number seven. And you want to make sure the base is square, kind of sharp on both edges. Okay. Um, one more thing is when I'm studying, sometimes if I'm not using an iPad, I like to use magnifier. And it's really cool when you have a magnifier. I don't know if <laughs> it's going to show you because um, it's not zooming very well, right? Anyway, a magnifier can help you to study all the details. And it's quite fun, especially if you go and look at your own work and use a magnifier and, you know, check out all the details, um, which really helps to improve as well. Now, lastly, let's do a quick... Uh, review a summarize okay um so i do this every time so hopefully i can finish it um within the time um one hour so first of all when we do the letter t let's zoom in a little bit okay now with the letter t you will have first of all we will start with the line of universal beauty which is a thin line, meaning no pressure, adding more pressure here. So gradation of pressure, heaviest in the center and start to reduce the pressure back to a hairline, come up and draw a ball terminal. Notice that this ball terminal as always is lifted above the baseline, okay? It's not, it's not here, but you bring it up and a little ball terminal. If you want, you can think about fitting a triangle here, fitting a triangle here, so that you can um, remind yourself that this is a reminder to reduce the pressure at the top of the triangle. And this is to remind you to bring the ball terminal uh, above the baseline. Now, once you've done that, you add ink by pressing. Just very gently press and the ink should go bloop fit it inside now the second stroke is the top crossbar first of all we start with a hairline that leads into an indirect loop now indirect means a, 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 a clockwise okay in calligraphy when we say indirect it's clockwise and if you say direct it's anti-clockwise just opposite so indirect loop so we come down adding some shade Back to a thin hairline quite quickly. Keep curving up as light as possible and do a very soft universal line of beauty here and lift. Okay, now um, what I do is I take this paper down. Okay, so I'll draw one more time. So thin, thicker, thickest right here, back to thin. Going up, relax, relax, and lift. Now, at the same time, your eyes should be judging how long uh, this crossbar is. Because you don't want to keep going, okay? You want your eye to be thinking the center line and adjusting the length. Now, in this situation, in my example, it's more or less... Um, balance so left and right balance as I said that in the old exemplar they can bring it further longer if there's some words here if it's on its own just the letter T I would say aesthetically it looks better when they're balanced okay now then what happened is we turn the page we add the synthetic shade by adding below this hairline on the right so you follow and add pressure and back always remember this we have to remain to be a hairline okay so if we have ink um, so for example if we look at maybe find a good example this one this is a thin hairline it's not it's not heavy now the synthetic shade uh, you have to rotate the paper. I mentioned that, okay? And um, so, th and yeah, so, oops, sorry. So that there you go, you got a T. Now the F is the same, 
but with just a um, middle crossbar. So let's repeat to remind you um, to enforce your memory. Start from thin, thicker, and the thickest, back to thin hairline, and thin going up above the baseline and draw a ball terminal. Then you press and the ink should fill right in the ball terminal. You want to avoid stirring with your sharp nib because by doing that with um, a lot of ink, a lot of the times um, the paper fiber will come up. Now the second stroke is once you build this, we would then draw a, a right the top crossbar. So you start from the hairline, adding a bit more pressure back to thin, keeping as relaxed as possible and go up and stop make sure your eye is checking the center point as a reference and how long it should be and you want to ideally balance the left line to the right so it's not elongated okay or too short now rotate the paper um, anti-clockwise so it's almost like like this and then you follow this is what I call like a, almost like a retrace so this part here is almost like a retrace and add the pressure turn the paper back to your normal slant and then you want to come up remember to keep it light lift keep traveling and then start here it has to look like they are connected okay you make a loop and add the pressure and pull to your left so that the the right time it's closing to the left and of course you want to make sure your crossbar it's more or less sitting in the middle of this area because um, we talk about the Roman capital uh, portion. Oh, that's very sweet. Thank you. <laughs> I hope it's just clear. Um, I did take notes for myself because I don't want to. I don't want to. I have notes here. I just don't want to miss anything. <laughs> but it is actually really good to for me to refresh all the details as well, because um, it is important if you want to get uh, more precise. I technically would suggest, uh, I mean, every time when I'm writing, I really write so slowly um, that your brain and your hand is coordinating. Because if you write really fast, then you forget the details or you kind of like out of control. Okay, so I cannot emphasize how important it is to write slow, especially for beginner. And I promise if you write maybe a couple of years, you will notice that uh, your arm movement and your hand and everything is more connected so that means you want your hand to go that way it will but i think if you haven't achieved that please don't force yourself or don't feel bad it takes time um it definitely do okay now one last thing because we just summarize is when we do the um when we do the alphabet with any ascender we have to remind yourself to maybe bring this top crossbar slightly above the ascender two line so that you can uh, you can give enough space for the ascender okay so that's um what i want to talk about i think wow today we managed to squeeze everything in an hour <laughs> do you guys have any questions at all um so i'm just gonna go through all the messages i think i still have five minutes which is amazing um so sorry i'm just scrolling through any questions you know i'm happy to answer mm. also one thing about the letter t this is um this is what i will do I will, i'm gonna show you so i'm just still scrolling through no question okay now when i am sending letters in hong kong <laughs> sure i can write a few words um 
When I'm sending letters in Hong Kong, I sometimes do the T, especially for postcode, like this. I make it fancy. Okay, I make it longer. If it's a postcode, maybe like T. Q. In fact, I won't be using this Q, Q because I think postmen may not understand this is a Q. They probably think this is a 2. So <laughs> I wouldn't write this Q. Sorry. I would do this Q. Okay. Now the reason I do this with a um, kind of a, a square base is because I want to make sure that the postman, especially in Hong Kong, can read it. If I do the Engrosser script T with the ball terminal, this one that you've been learning, a cheat a bit without turning the page. Now that can be a bit dangerous because I worry they would read it as a J, even though I know that it's not a J because a J should be having a descender loop, right? But you, if you want to make sure, especially if you're doing clients' work, you may want to consider that. Okay. Um. So, I have literally two minutes left. So I don't know if I should continue. I'm happy to write some words. Maybe I will do some T and F alphabet words. I'll come back for 10, 15 minutes. But I will save this now. And if you want to come back, you're welcome to. And I'll see you later. Thank you.